today's discussion is about advanced radiographic techniques the first one is orthopantomography also called as panoramic imaging okay i'll be covering just the basic mechanisms through these videos see in orthopantomography as we can see in the image first uh, on the right side you can see there is a uh, tube head that is the x-ray source on the left side of the uh, of there is a receptor with secondary collimator okay the blue part the entire thing is the receptor with a uh, localized collimator that is the gray part okay now both of these things are moving okay first we can see the tube head is the direction of x-ray source around the patient and in the similar direction the receptor is also moving in this diagram in the anti-clockwise direction okay so see in this picture the first picture uh, first one is the position of the tube head at the start okay i hope everybody can see the black tube head with uh, number one written on it and the image is formed on the receptor on the opposite side okay here with the arrows we can see the starting point is number one the image is formed just opposite to it then again the uh, tube head and the receptor cassette receptor is also moving okay so now the tube has head comes to position 2 then position 3 then in the next diagram position 4 5 and 6 in this way it is completing the entire rotation okay and simultaneously at the same time the image is formed see on the image on the right side first a partial the most posterior part of the right uh, left side is formed then a little bit more a more uh, from uh, position 3 then from position 4 5 6 and an uh, entire image is formed in 6 steps here for uh, to, for the ease of understanding only 6 steps are shown but actually they are very millimeter steps when actually the machine moves it's continuous in multiple steps not only 6 steps ok so in also in this the previous pictures only you can see that the tube is never going to the most anterior part okay it is moving in the like the most anterior or midline anterior part is not covered by the tube and at the same time the receptor never goes to the most posterior part okay it has a significance we'll see further now in this diagram we can see that in between there is a center of rotation okay the center of rotation is the black dotted line in the center which is a continuous center of rotation when tube head moves as shows uh, the center of rotation also shifts continuously and follows this arc okay so here comes the uh, real image real Im there are three types of images are formed real images double images and ghost images okay first one this is the real image it is formed between a uh, real image is formed of the objects which are placed between receptor and center of rotation okay since the receptor never comes to the most posterior part the most posterior part is left okay next is the ghost image it is formed of the objects which are between source and center of rotation so the source that is the tube head is never going to the end, most anterior part so anterior part is spared okay it is between center of rotation and source the ghost image now comes the double image it is formed between the objects which are posterior to the center of rotation and have been imaged twice okay so it comes in this diamond shape of area only these objects will be imaged double and are posterior to the center of rotation coming to computed tomography and cone beam computed tomography this is the picture showing computed tomography in which there is a x-ray source and a fan shaped beam of x-rays is coming and falling on the detector so x-ray source uh, is the like is like the tube head from where x-ray is coming and detectors are the receptors or the detectors which detect the x-ray which is coming out of the patient okay so uh, after attenuation the x-rays will fall on the detector 
Okay, this picture shows the three gen third generation. First A diagram is the third generation. How earlier uh, CT machines were in that the tube head is moving in the same way uh, detectors is also moving because there are not a complete circle of detectors only an arc of detectors. So it is also moving. Then B uh, diagram B shows the fourth generation of CT in which detectors are a complete circle. So detectors doesn't have to move. Every place has a detector. Only the tube head is moving. Okay. Then came C. Uh, this is the fifth generation which is mostly used now. Here the patient is moving inside the gantry. See the big black arrows is showing the movement of the patient. At the same time, X-ray source and detectors, everything is moving. The detectors are also moving within the gantry and X-ray source is also moving within the gantry. And the image formed, each slice is imaged. So each slice is stored in the form of pixel. Uh, this cross diagram we can see has 512 by 512 pixels. In more advanced machines, this is double of this that is 1024 pixels by 1024 pixels this each square is called a pixel when we assess the volume also okay that is the third dimension of this each square it becomes a voxel and each of these square each pixel has been given a Hounsfield unit okay means each pixel will have a gray scale based on the attenuation okay so bone has more attenuation means less of the x-rays will pass through it less or none actually will pass through bone so the Hounsfield unit will be high that is from 400 to 1000 and for air every all the x-rays will pass through air nothing will be attenuated or very less will be attenuated so for air CT number or Hounsfield number is very less that is minus 1000.